Hey y'all, Chuck here. Hey, uh, today I want to talk to you about my tow vehicle. Uh, my tow vehicle and some of the accessories that I put on it, uh, some of the things it came with. And uh, I want to show you some of the things that I have in the back uh, in preparation of our, our long journey in our travel trailer. So, uh, first off, the truck itself is a 2004 F350 Ford diesel. Uh, it is four-wheel drive. Um, I bought the vehicle on Craigslist after looking at several vehicles. Now, my trailer is only a 26-foot uh, Outback Keystone trailer. It weighs 5,500 pounds uh, with just the factory stuff in it now added mine and Paige and our two other guests stuff in there you could probably add maybe 500 pounds addition maybe a little more I don't know it's still a light trailer so. the diesel one ton uh, four wheel drive truck is way too much truck for this trailer but that's that's what you need to make sure you always have more pulling you have more truck than you than you really need you don't want to pull a gooseneck or something like that with a with an F150 to me even a 250 is just borderline okay you, to me you always want to have you want to have more just for the security. So we're gonna be up in the mountains uh, in Colorado, you know, up, uh, way up in the Rockies. So I, I don't wanna have to worry about routes and conditions and stuff like that. Um, worst case scenario, I've got roadside assistance, which is a must, AAA or, or make sure you have the roadside assistance. Call your insurance company, it's about $7. Uh, uh, make sure you find out uh, the details of what it what it really is. So I gotta have that just in case. I don't really like to depend on anybody, so that's why I have all this crap in the back of my truck, and this is why I have the big diesel. You know. So I did pull this with an F-150, but I wouldn't trust it up in the mountains at 12,000 feet, you know, altitude. So yeah, so the truck itself. Uh, I bought on Craigslist. I paid tw I paid eleven thousand for the truck. So the guy did probably twelve thousand dollars worth of repairs in the past three years. Uh, he has given me the binder with all the receipts, the records of his repairs. He has done everything to this truck. Uh, it was a work truck. It's never been modified. It's never had any kind of performance crap on it. Uh, by the way, if you have a six liter. And you're complaining about head bolts and all that it's because you've probably added shit to it that it didn't that it didn't need so whenever you modify a vehicle that, you know well that's a completely different subject so we may talk about modifications later so anyway uh yeah he's done everything he did he bulletproofed the motor he did the uh, egr deal he did the head gaskets the bolts uh, he, he replaced the entire cooling system, the suspension, all the brakes, the air conditioner has been totally replaced. Uh, yeah, he has done a lot of stuff to the truck and the truck rides really good. I did put a set of tires on the truck. Uh, it had mud terrain tires on there which were extremely loud and they were about 60%, maybe 70% worn. And, I I didn't want to deal with that on the road, so I did. I went to I went to Discount Tire here and, and got some. I still got all terrain tires, but they're very quiet and they, and they are getting me better fuel mileage. Uh, it, yes, if you have big mud tires on your truck, it will cause you to have poor fuel mileage because it it's harder for that thing to. Uh, it's like trying to run in boots, you know. So you can probably run better in a good pair of tennis shoes versus uh, you know mud boots. So anyway. It's the truth. 
So yeah, I put a brush guard on there. He didn't have one. I bought this used for $200. Uh, it's a Ranch King bumper. I got it because I uh, I know there's a lot of deer up in the mountains. And I don't feel like jackknifing my trailer at 50 miles per hour. So just in case I have to hit one, God forbid, I, I hate killing animals. I, I, I need to have minimal damage as possible. So I did buy the brush guard and installed it uh, in preparation for some kind of catastrophe like that. So uh, it did come with this gigantic camper shell. Uh, I was going to buy a camper shell for whatever vehicle that I had purchased. Uh, I, I needed the camper shell to protect the stuff that I wanted to put inside. Uh, and also in case somebody wanted, felt like they needed to take my stuff, you know, they needed my stuff. So uh, it does have locks, which most of them have locks anyway. So, but yeah, it came with the camper shell. Uh, we got lights inside it, lights in the front, lights in the back. So I don't have to fumble around with a flashlight or have some kind of light attached to my my hat or some stupid crap like that, you know. So uh, the four-wheel drive part of this truck is manual. Uh, it did come with automatic locking hubs. However, I prefer to have the manual hubs. And these are aftermarket hubs that were installed on here. Uh, the factory four-wheel drive uh, was vacuum operated, so uh, sometimes, you know, I, well, I have seen the vacuum lines get knocked off uh, the hubs or they dry rot and then, it's, and then it's not working at all and then you just cannot use your four-wheel drive, so uh, you still have, you just engage the four-wheel drive selector switch inside and you get outside your truck and you lock the hubs manually and then you unlock them manually. It ain't no damn big deal. I'd much, I feel better than than uh, the having having to do that than possibly my shit ain't working and I don't have like the exact vacuum hose in my friggin' truck. You know, they're trying to tape it up when I'm covered in mud and water. You know what I mean? So manual hubs are a great thing. So uh, okay well inside here i have this storage bin uh, in this storage bin it's it's a lightweight little storage bin i have it bungee corded to the side it's got three drawers it is used mostly to hold our excessive amount of shoes that we have so uh, i guess it's you know my wife has a lot of shoes so they're small shoes but she has a lot it's okay so we've got a place other than the camper to put our shoes and this is it toolbox now this is a top part of a craftsman box that i had in my garage i filled it up with miscellaneous tools that i thought uh, i could use in any not every kind of situation but a lot of i can make it work with the tools that i have inside i have some air tools in here too but uh, the lid closes um, and the drawers don't open up, you know, if, if when the lid is closed. And uh, yeah, I've got wrenches, screwdrivers, everything I think I possibly might need. Generator. Uh, I've got this generator that I bought at Lowe's. You know, I screwed up and didn't do too much research on generators. I watched a few videos of people's uh, you know their thoughts and opinions on certain generators you know and the way my mind works is like i want to i want overkill i want i want more than i need blah 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 but in this case you pro i probably uh i probably didn't need all that so but this generator here is uh it cost me about 550 bucks uh, i think it's more than that but i used my military discount so i think i got 10 percent off of that you know, they had the smaller ones that are just inverters that would have ran my air conditioner and done everything just fine and they were lighter but this thing is heavy as shit i've got it i've got it strapped in here so it doesn't accidentally roll uh, but you can probably get it out but you can't get this son bitch in there by yourself so anyway the generator i've got cords extension cords attached to it so i don't have to try to you know get on the side of it and, and 
and try to hook everything up. So it starts really easy. I made these foam insulators to keep the noise down. Uh, these are just kind of packing egg carton deals that I've kind of taped to the cardboard. It does help a lot with the noise. It does quiet it down quite a bit. So uh, when I have it on, I take this box fan and I just, uh, you know, I plug the box fan in, crank it up, and then uh, I just open the windows, make sure the back, the back gate is lifted up for air ventilation. And I've had this thing running for a couple hours when our power was out and no problem. So as long as there's nothing obviously in front of the exhaust system or inside the air intake, uh, everything should be, should be fine with that. Um, I have this compressor here. Uh, the compressor I feel like I need in case I need to put air in my tires. Uh, I get a flat tire on the road. I've got a plug kit. Uh, I can plug it up and air the tire up and get down the road. If I need to change a tire on my trailer, on my truck, uh, I've got it. Uh, and, and if I need to operate some of my air tools, like my impact to get my tire off, then, I, then I've got that too. So uh, it's just, it's not something you have to have, uh, but, you know, just kind of makes it more convenient to be able to do this stuff at your campsite now i can plug if i'm in if i have power obviously and i'm in a campsite i just plug it in with an extension cord but if i'm on the road i can just plug it right into my generator and i can i can use my air at that point so yeah i've got that and i've got plenty of hose extensions to go with it to go to the back of the trailer if need be so uh floor jack i've got a pretty heavy duty three ton floor jack that I got at a place called uh, Harbor Freight Tools. Uh, it was about a hundred dollars on sale. Uh, I also have a couple of now these are cheap. It's my wife Paige. I'm sure everybody knows Paige. She's inside doing some cleaning. We just went grocery shop and it's still muddy as hell out here. It's gonna be dry for the next three days but I think it's gonna rain day this week so we're gonna sit out here and barbecue and enjoy the, the sun for a little bit while it lasts you know so yeah but anyway I bought these cheap floor jacks I mean floor jacks jack stands I had some better jack stands but I gave them away and uh, I don't know I felt like with this three ton floor jack I could just change one tire at a time but if I have to put something on a jack stand that little jack stand will it'll, it'll do the job temporarily, uh, you know, if need be. So, yeah. So, I've got the safety uh, emergency markers also in case I do have a flat tire and I'm on the side of the road and I want to bring caution to my situation. Uh, I just set these up so that traffic will you know try to veer from from me as much as possible if if there's not a whole lot of room on the street to to get out of everybody's way so i have that as well so five gallon container of water i have this container here and my original thought was for the vehicle if i developed a water leak or something like that i could try to MacGyver the leak to contain the leak uh, and then get to where I need to get to repair it or you know if we're somewhere boondocking and I have to use it for the trailer which I should I'm gonna try to keep some water in the trailer obviously for that reason if I run out then I'll just use my five gallon bucket and if I need to find water somewhere then I can fill it up and so on and so forth. anyway a five gallon bucket of water it's necessary uh, for for multiple reasons why so uh, I've got this blue box here that's full of just in case crap so I like to have just in case stuff just in case something happens I want to make sure I have it uh, I can't have everything obviously uh, so but what I've got in here is I've got a tow strap, I've got tie downs, I've got, uh, 
I've got some jumper cables. I actually have two pairs of jumper cables. Why, I don't know, because they're both badass sets of cables and I didn't feel like getting rid of the other one. So I have two sets of jumper cables in the, in the box. Uh, I've got other kind of ropes. Um, I, you know, I've just, I have some chemicals and some greases. I've got some, I've got some wheel bearings for the travel trailer, just in case one of my bearings goes out. Uh, I have had that happen to me before where I'm having to uh, try to figure out how to get somewhere and get the right kind of bearing that was disintegrated on my trailer so that I can, I can repair it. So I, I have one of those um, as well. So I've got a shovel, a rake, a machete, an axe. You know, these are all, I think, camping necessities, uh, mainly for uh, chopping wood, obviously, for fires. You want to dig a fire pit, you want to put out a fire, you want to rake the area. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I have it. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Uh, you definitely do not want to leave a smoldering fire behind, for sure. Uh, Make sure you put out your, your fire. I would put out my fire and use my gallon, my some of my water, in my five gallon bucket, uh, if if we didn't have water pressure to, to help to distinguish the you know, any kind of heat left over in the fire. So I don't need to tell campers that you should all know that by now anyway. So uh, I have this fire extinguisher here. Um, I've already had a house burned down one time. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I ever want to experience. Well, I don't think I know I don't ever want to experience that again. So I have a fire extinguisher in the trailer, uh, and I have this fire extinguisher here in the truck. So I've got fire extinguishers, and and they're all the, the green indicators are on them. Make sure they're green and ready to go. Uh, that's kind of why I have two, just in case one doesn't work. And I have had them be in the green, and it didn't work, you know, before. So, uh, camping gear. I have camping gear inside here. Uh, I've got a sleeping bag, an air, a twin air mattress, and an electric pump. So the electric pump is a necessity, or a manual pump. Uh, you're not blowing the some bitch up manually by your breath your lungs it's just it's not happening so got to have some kind of pump uh, to air up an air mattress if you if you're gonna bring one uh, our friends might I don't have a tent to sleep in our friends may want to sleep in a tent because I do snore so <laughs> who knows I'll, I'll bring them an air mattress and some sleeping bags but uh, I have uh, this big screened in tent for basically for eating and uh, we, if you don't want to get eaten up by mosquitoes while you're eating or sitting outside because you know we want to sit outside mostly so if, we're, if there's a lot of mosquitoes in the area that we're going to be in we have this tent and we can try to contain them as best as, as best as we can so i bought a badass electric fly swatter so that works better than that stupid ass fly strip deal that is worthless. Uh, yeah, so fishing rod holders. These fishing rod holders were in the truck already mounted. He had this thing kind of custom fit with this carpet up here to attach these rod holders. I thought that was badass. When I saw that, I was like, this is the truck. This is, <laughs> this is my sign, you know? I was going to try to negotiate the price a little bit less than what it is. I didn't want to insult him too bad because he had spent a lot of money on the truck. Uh, but it was like, man, I got to have this freaking truck. And this thing is my, this is my truck. So, yeah. So I got my rods up here. I got some tackle. I am a big fisherman. I love to fish. Every chance I get, I want to try to fish uh, on my on my adventure. So. Uh, whether you know it's just for fun or, or for eating so everybody in the camper loves to eat fish so I I want to I want to catch some rainbow trout uh, and pan fish and you know if I can get crappie probably won't 
I like bass, but you know, there's other stuff out there that's better than bass to eat. Uh, unless it's white bass or striped bass, that's pretty good. But I prefer crappie, uh, trout. Uh, I don't know if I'll get a chance to catch salmon or not, but you know, it's a lot of damn fish to try to store in your freezer. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna fish. So yeah, I got my fishing rods and my fishing gear with me, and uh, I can't wait to, to get that going. So other than that, guys, uh, GPS, you know, uh, that is a very important tool to have. Uh, I don't need to tell you all that with today's technology. Everybody has MapQuest, Google what on their phone. I mean, I, nobody, nobody asks directions from anybody no more. They, anymore they just ask for a damn address you know text me your address and then they just hit a button and it tells them how to get there so back in my day we didn't have that shit you know it was definitely like where you gonna do you gotta turn down here and you're gonna find it you know when you get to but you know that's how you you know okay whatever or a map we always had a map in our damn car so uh, i can use my phone too but my phone gets hot now, I will use my phone in instances where there's traffic because I think Google has a better grasp on, on what's happening right now. So it can tell you uh, basically how much traffic and tell you why there's traffic and tell you detours and stuff like that. But to use it on the road constantly, I'm just I'm worried my battery is going to prematurely fail because the damn thing gets hot even when it's plugged in to the cigarette lighter. So. I use the GPS, now mine's voice uh, activated, it doesn't have voice recognition, so uh, it doesn't understand me sometimes, and that's extremely frustrating because I don't, uh, I don't want to grab it and start punching shit into the thing. It is a touch screen, so I mean, that, that's easier, but it takes my eyes off of the road, so, and it doesn't understand Paige for shit, so, and she can't talk to it. So that's a little frustrating, but uh, I have an atlas. Uh, it's extremely important to have a road atlas in your truck. You can buy one at just about any truck stop on your route. Buy an atlas because it has every single state, uh, most every city, major city uh, inside it. And if you're not really 100% sure how to navigate through a, a road map or an atlas, it's better than not having nothing. So I, I think you would figure it out if you had to. And I think most everybody that packs up their shit and goes in an RV or, or, or gets in their car and travels to another state, they probably know how to read a damn map anyway, I, I would think. so. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, I just wanted to tell you about what the vehicle I had and what I expect out of it and uh, some of the things that I'm going to use on our trip. And, uh, you know, I try not to give too much advice on things that I don't really know about. Uh, I do know quite a bit about vehicles. Um, I don't know much about traveling in an RV because this is our first adventure. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things that I have that aren't necessary. But you know what? It's like having friggin' insurance. When you have insurance, you don't need it. When you don't have insurance, then you know you know what's going to happen. So I just wanted to tell you all about that. And I want to thank you again for watching my videos. We are ready to go. Uh, we are going to be leaving here, uh, I think, somewhere towards in the 22nd of this month, something like that. Our friends are going to be here next uh, Friday, I think, something like that. And, uh, I'm going to have them stay with us in the trailer a day or two before we leave so we can get their stuff situated in here as well. Uh, and then we're going to get the blank out of here. I'm ready to go. This is what? Uh, my house deal. Uh, for, a lot of people have been following me. I, my house is uh, closing Friday. Uh, I've had a whole shitload of, an obstacle, of obstacles to get to this point. When that's over, it'll be a memory for me. I cannot wait. Um, I'm sick of dealing with that crap. I'm ready to rid all of my things to get rid of my baggage and just enjoy uh, life and uh, 
I want to be successful at life and just be unpredictable. The least amount of things that I have is the less anchors that I, that I, I have, and I, I can pick up and go pretty much anywhere that I want to. So that's what uh, that's what I'm really looking forward to doing is just uh, getting rid of all my crap. Just got my little Camry I need to sell. Uh, I got a lot of calls on it, but. Before I sell that some bitch also, I will just put it in a friggin' storage unit before I give it away. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm not too worried about the little camera. It's going to sell pretty quick. So, I've only had it on the market, I think, three days now. So. Okay, guys. Well, again, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, uh, like I said, I'm not an expert at things. I'm just giving you some advice that I know and uh, just telling you some of the things that I'm doing. Uh, if you see I'm doing something wrong, then I don't mind your input. Uh, I know I, uh, I definitely can take criticism. Uh, whatever you got to say, I'm, I'm ready to hear it. I've had a lot of good criticism criticism out there, and a lot I, I've taken a lot of people's advice, and I really do appreciate that. I really, really do. So, yeah, thanks for the comments. Uh, if you like my channel, you can subscribe. If you like it, click like. If you don't, click unlike. Uh, again, I'm not sensitive. If you've got something negative to say and you feel like getting it off your chest, have at it. So, again, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.